Good morning, folks. Got several science items to hit today in solar physics and climate. We've also had significant geomagnetic activity as suggested yesterday morning, and the solar watch continues with active regions and several plasma filaments. We will examine the surge in sunspot activity momentarily, but first let's go to the solar wind and KP index because we not only entered geomagnetic storm conditions, but they were sustained pretty much throughout the afternoon and overnight hours. Red bars at the bottom showing the disturbance, which was only level one, minor storm conditions, but the solar wind was somewhat mild given the extended duration of the resulting geomagnetic activity. There was a gorgeous plasma filament that erupted on the south, and that is why we're monitoring the rest like this thin, dark, snake-like plasma filament turning into face earth today. We also have had a surge in sunspots at the active regions over the last 48 hours, but as of this morning, they have mostly benign beta magnetic classifications. We will be monitoring that as well today for any change to more eruptive magnetism. Let's go to a forecast of extreme drought conditions. While this operates fairly well within known flawed models, it does represent the expected changes, whether it's their carbon forcing or the geomagnetic and solar forcing we often discuss here. Obviously, blue is where you'd want to be if you like growing food. A complex but fantastic piece up next on the challenges with modeling atmospheric electricity in the global electric circuit. As we've mentioned before, it takes world-class supercomputers days to weeks to run global circulation models of the planet right now, and to include the global electric circuit energy flows and their resulting effects on clouds, humidity, lightning, and surface temperatures interacting from ground to ionosphere centered in every pressure cell would increase the complexity approximately 100-fold, and they still don't know exactly how to properly include it or other electromagnetic forcing phenomena like the equatorward traveling waves. It's not just the polar region where the aurora are found that is affected. Speaking of which, another study identifying one of those features. Indeed, this equatorward propagation works on Jupiter and on the Earth, and it's one of the total atmospheric forcing pathways which affects that global electric circuit up and down everywhere it propagates, and again, which isn't in those climate models at all. We greatly appreciate your support. To learn more, find our playlists and our ebook PDFs at the links in the description box below the video. We've got shots of our star to close. I do plan on taking a day off this weekend, but don't know if that'll be tomorrow or Sunday. We'll see you either tomorrow or Sunday, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.